eat some day and another day I had a very important dinner and Buenas tardes, senorita. <laughs> Buenas tardes, uh, Darwin. Nice to see you. Today we're going to have a lesson number 16, lesson of Russian language. It will be number 16. Urok 16. I'm going to send the link in the chat. Just by clicking on the link, you would be able to do all of the activities as I do, and you would be able to draw things, you would be able to write the text, change the color of the text, so you can do everything I do. So it will help you to practice more. So welcome, welcome, and <laughs> let's start. Okay, first, урок 16. Предложный падеж. Где? So today we will actually start learning the cases. There are six cases in Russian language. And uh, it will be silly to learn all of them at the same time. So today we will start with maybe the easiest. That is called предложный падеж. The name is long and scary, but in reality, is not nothing is uh, that difficult. So, as usual, we will start with common phrases that we learn, just small conversations. We have to читай и переводи, read and translate. At first, we will read everything, and after, we will translate. Katya, что ты делаешь? Я читаю. Что ты читаешь? Книгу. So now we can try to translate. Катя, что ты делаешь? Obviously, Катя is the name of a female, of a girl. And что is what? Ты, you, делаешь, doing. So we can just make it as, okay, let's change the color, maybe into the blue. And let's type here, Kata, what are you doing? And we can also extend this. Kata, что ты делаешь? Я читаю. Я. I читать читаю means reading. I am reading. I would like to remind you that in Russian language we don't have we don't need to say uh, this auxiliary verbs is am uh, are. We don't use them. We don't need them. We just say I reading. That's enough. I'm reading. Я читаю. Что ты читаешь? So here we can just logically guess if we know что means what. Ты, you, what you, чита, чита. Sounds, sounds very similar, so reading. What are you reading? What are you reading? As I told uh, in a couple of lessons that we have the root, the main part of the word. In this case, in the verb uh, читать, reading, it will be cheat, cheat. So basically, in, if you'll see, it, a see any word where in the middle somewhere you will see cheat, probably it would be related to the word reading or reading activity. So for example, we can, I can write here the word прочитанный. It's a very long word, right? Uh, but we still have... Okay, let's make it red, uh, black and we'll put red. But we still have cheat in, betwe in between. And it will be something regarding reading. So прочитанный means you have already finished it reading. So it has been read. But still, cheat. Mm. Ч я читаю. I am reading, cheat. Ты читаешь, you are reading, cheat. Uh, what else could be прочитаны? Uh, 
maybe читающий. Again, we have cheat, so it's a person who is reading at the moment. Maybe перечитанный. So you have read something multiple times. So everywhere, oops, everywhere we have this cheat, 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 cheat. So as long as you can recognize these uh, patterns, these roots of the words, it won't. It will be very easy for you to understand the meaning. Okay, so we have the last word here. Книгу. What are you reading? Что ты читаешь? Книгу. We know книга. Книга. It's a book. So книгу also a book. And here blue. A book. Oops, it's Russian, <laughs> not English. Let's change a book. So again, in English language, we have the articles, a or the, but in Russian language, we don't have anything. We don't need to add those. It's pretty easy. Okay, let's go to the next one. Again, читай и переводи. Здравствуй, Игорь. Здравствуй, Катя. Я играю на компьютере, а ты? Я покупаю хлеб. А сколько он стоит? Тридцать девять рублей. Okay. Здравствуй, Игорь. So, Игорь is obviously a name, and it is, in this case, it's the name of a man or a boy. So, Игорь, he. You would never see a woman with the name Игорь, <laughs> just as a notice. So, Игорь is always he. Здравствуй, Игорь. Здравствуй is hello. In the previous dialogue, we had, uh, we didn't have actually. So, usually when we say hi, we say Привет, привет. But if we want to be more polite or respectful, we will say hello. And in this case, we'll say здравствуй, здравствуй. So it will be hello, Igor. Здравствуй, Катя. So he is also quite polite to her. It says hello, Катя. Я играю на компьютере. А ты? Я, I, играю, play, на, он, компьютере, компьютер, а, and, ты, you. I'm playing uh, on the computer, and you? I'm playing on the computer, and you? Я играю на компьютере, а ты? In this case, it's like, what are you doing? What about you? Я покупаю хлеб. I покупать, покупаю, means to buy. Хлеб is bread. I'm buying bread. А сколько он стоит? А, and, сколько, how much, он, he, стоит, cost. Um, in English, bread cannot be he, so we have to say how much is it. But in Russian, хлеб ends with a consonant. That's why we use on, preposition on, that refers to he, male, uh, male gender. Okay, and how much is it? Probably in the answer, we will see the number. So let's read the answer. 39 рублей. Рубль, рублей, is a currency, rubles. 9 is 9. 30. 3 is 3. Set uh, refers to something with a 
0 at the end. So it will be 3 with a 0, 30. So 39 rubles. Ta-da! Not that difficult after all. So let's read this dialogue one more time. I will choose maybe the yellow here. Здравствуй, Игорь. Здравствуй, Катя. Я играю на компьютере. А ты? Я покупаю хлеб. А сколько он стоит? 39 рублей. Ta-da! Congratulations! You have done it! So now we can go to the next slide and we can uh, just review, answer some questions to review what do we remember from the previous lessons. So let's uh, read what we need to do. Ответь на вопрос. Answer the question. Number one. Сколько стоит хлеб? How much? The bread cost. How much does the bread cost? And uh, you need to write the answer in your country, like in your city, in your town, and where you live. How much does the bread cost? Сколько стоит хлеб? Of course, there are like tons of different uh, sorts of bread and kinds, but just any bread, we're just practicing numbers. So you can click on the T button, text, you can click on the white space here. You can choose any color you like. I will choose maybe red. And I will type the answer. And the answer we need to write with the Russian letters, not numbers, not English alphabet. Сколько стоит хлеб? And please write with a full sentence. So we'll write хлеб стоит. The bread costs. And now we need to write the number. Хлеб стоит. Um, I will think about, let's say, a Russian currency. So I would say 36 рублей. Хлеб стоит 36 рублей. The bread costs 36 rubles. You can choose any currency you like, or you can choose uh, rubles, dollars, euro, whatever you like. Next one. Сколько времени? What time is it? Сколько is how many, how much? Время, времени is time. Basically, what time is it? If I look at my time, I have 18.14 at the moment, or 6 uh, o'clock in the evening. So you can write it in any way you know. So the easiest way, purple malice, привет, привет. Wow, perfect uh, Russian spelling, by the way. There is a link in the uh, chat. You c if you click, you can also do all of the writing activities. So later we're going to do some non-writing activities. It will be more like games where we have to do some matchups and uh, it will be a little bit maybe more fun <laughs> for those who have just started. Okay, сколько времени? So I will just write first with numbers. At my place it is 1815. So if you don't know much how to say what time is it, but you know the numbers, you can just write 18. So in Russian, 18 is 18. And if you want, you can say hours. 18 часов. But it's again, so much uh, extra words. It's uh, kind of useless. So we can now we can talk about the minutes. 15 is... 15. Okay, 15. So we can just say 18, 15. 18, 15. 15. That's enough. That's uh, many people uh, describe the time by this way, and no problems. Everyone would always understand you. Okay, next question. 
Как зовут маму? Как means how. Зовут cold. Мама, маму, мам. How is your mom cold? Or what's your mom's name? Because remember, we when we introduce ourselves, we say меня зовут. My name is. But in reality, if we just translate it, it will be uh, I am called Ina. Меня зовут Ина. I'm called Ina. But it kind of sounds weird in English, so it's kind of my name is. Как зовут маму? We can say ее, like her name is ее зовут and the name. Ее зовут Аня. It's not my mom's name, but it's just a new name for us. So <laughs> let's practice. Ее зовут Аня. Like her name, her, called Аня. Or she is called Аня. Her name is Аня. Как зовут маму? Дальше. Next question. Что ты любишь есть? Что ты любишь есть? Что is what? Ты, you, любишь, love, есть, eat. What do you love to eat? Or what do you like to eat? What do you love to eat? So here we have to use our endings for the verbs. Я люблю есть, да-да-да-да. So, what do you like to eat? So, you can write the word есть, I love to eat, blah, blah, blah. Or you can just say, I love something. For example, I, я люблю есть торт, a cake. I love cakes, that's true. Or I can just uh, skip this word есть and I can just say, я люблю торт. I love cakes. Я люблю есть торт. I love eating cakes. Not a big difference. I mean, you don't have to say the word есть. Everyone would understand that you are not going to take a shower with a cake or drink a cake. So it will be silly, right? Next question. Что ты любишь пить? So it is almost identical question to the previous. Что ты любишь? Что ты любишь? What do you love? What do you love? In the first case, we had есть, to eat. In the second case, пить, is to drink. Что ты любишь пить? What do you love to drink? And again, we can copy the pattern above. Я люблю, I love, пить. Я люблю пить. Hmm, what do I love? I love to drink water, воду. Some people like молоко, milk. Some people like сок, juice. Maybe пиво. Actually, this is true. Я люблю пить пиво. I like to drink beer. Я люблю пить чай. Я не люблю пить кофе. And the final question. Что ты делаешь? Means what are you doing? What you doing? Что ты делаешь? Yeah, and you can write any verb that you remember, anything. I am reading. I am listening. I am looking. I am eating. I am drinking. I am whatever you 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 walking in the park we had the uh, verb we had uh, running at some point we had uh, playing killing buying so maybe i will say selling i am selling lessons why not i'm selling some lessons online that's true so ya prodayu urok uroki I'm selling lessons. Actually, this month was pretty successful. <laughs> okay, that's it. If you think that you have finished, you can click on the uh, next button and we will uh, 
review our verbs that ends with at. So we had играть to play, убивать to kill, продавать to sell, убегать to run away, читать to read, покупать to buy, deal it to do or to make something so why do we group the verbs by their endings because uh how do you call it con verbs conjunctions uh depend on their endings so this is one group and it will be easier for us to follow the rules so you can check the previous lesson for the rules and here we are going to start and we're going to divide them by groups ya ты on and ana so all of these verbs on the left they are the infinitives and this is the form how we will find them in a dictionary but when we speak uh, and they could be used in this form after an auxiliary verb like must or love. For example, I love to play. Я люблю играть. But I am playing will be я играю. So we're going to read the word and decide if it should be я, ты, он, он, um, or она. Я means I, ты is you. Он, he, она, she. Делаешь, делаешь. To do something, deal it, делаешь. Ты делаешь, means you are doing, you are making something. Ты делаешь. What can we do? Ты делаешь уроки. It means you are doing your homework. Ты делаешь уроки. Next one. Убегаю, убегаю. Я убегаю. I'm running away. Mm -hmm. Убиваешь, убиваешь. Ты убиваешь. You are killing. Убегаешь. Running away. Убегаешь. Ты убегаешь. Читаешь. Читаешь. Ты читаешь. You are reading. Do you see the pattern? All of them, they end with yes. Yes, 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 yes. It, with you, pronoun you, the verbs change the endings to yes. Ты делаешь, ты убегаешь, ты убиваешь, ты читаешь. Next one, убегает, убегает. If we look with я, the words end with you. With ты, they end with ешь. So probably it should be the final column. Он убегает, она убегает. He is running away, she is running away. Читает, читает. Again here, reading. Он читает, he is reading. Она читает, she is reading. Продаю, продаю. Я продаю. Ends with you. Покупает, покупает. To buy. Он покупает, она покупает. Покупаешь, покупаешь. Ты покупаешь. You are buying. Делаю. Делаю. Я делаю. I am making. What I'm doing. Убиваю. Убиваю. Killing. I am killing. Я убиваю. So this is a... Uh... After we've done a little bit of the stuff together, it should not be a problem to you to just match the words and 
again i will send the link to the chat one more time for anyone who came maybe a little bit late so you can just click on the link no registration nothing and you can do all of these activities as i do don't forget to write your real name убивает убивает means killing он убивает he is killing она убивает she is killing читаю читаю я читаю i'm reading продает продает so this word is different it ends with yot I don't see anything here. Here is you everywhere. Here is yes. Here is yet. <clears throat> so let's keep it for a while. Продаешь. Again, something with your. Let's keep it. Играешь. Играешь. Ты играешь. You are playing. <clears throat> играет. Играет. Он играет. Она играет. He is playing, she is playing. Играю. Я. Я играю. I'm playing. Покупаю. Я покупаю. I'm buying. Делает. Делает. Он делает. Она делает. So what can we do with these two words? I mean, if you've watched the previous lesson, you know what to do. But if you haven't, you might be confused now. So in Russian language, the letter Ye and Yo, they are, they look very similar. And very often in the text, they don't even write these two dots. They always write Ye everywhere instead of Yo. But they are two different um, letters and when we are reading the words we're supposed to know when is your so it's a little bit of a tricky thing but again nothing will happen if you will say yeah instead of your or your instead of yeah it's not critical people will still understand so apart from that those two dots just try to think in which category should it be продает or продает if it's продает, obviously it should be on or not. And that's correct. This just uh, the uh, verb продавать is a little, it follows the rule, but just a little bit different with pronunciation. So он продает, he is selling. Она продает, she is selling. The same with продаешь. It's the very same word to sell. If we just change these two dots into ye, yeah, so it will be продаешь, it will be exactly the same. Ты продаешь, or ты продаешь. You are selling. Ta da! So now we uh, reviewed our verbs a little bit. So during the next lesson, we will practice continuing the sentences. For example, Я продаю, and we will say what I'm selling. I'm selling, but we'll say I'm selling a phone. I'm selling a computer. So we will go through that grammar piece. But for now, we reviewed it. That's great. Let's move on. So now it's time for the new vocabulary. Новые слова. So new words would be related to the topic. Мой дом means my house letter k or k okay letter k k k that makes the sound k k k kuchnya 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 a kitchen eta kuchnya it is a kitchen eta belaya kuchnya it is a white kitchen Кухня ends with я. It is a feminine gender. Next one. Mm -hmm. Next one is letter Z. Z. 
sound z, z. Almost like z, but just a little bit without the at the end. Z, z. Zal, zal. A living room. Actually, we have for living room, okay, in English, there are two words, a living room and a sitting room. In, Eng in Russian, we also have two words. One will be zal, another one will be gastine. Both words are used commonly and quite often, but just for the sake of today's lesson, not to overwhelm you with a lot of vocabulary, I picked the shorter one. That's it. Z зал. Это зал. It is a living room. Это красивый зал. It is a beautiful uh, living room. Зал ends with a consonant. So it is masculine gender. That's what we say. Он красивый. And that's what we say. Красивый зал. Mm -hmm. Okay, next one. Letter S makes the sound s. Spalnya. Spalnya. Stressing, uh, stress falls on A. Spalnya. Spalnya is a bedroom. When I was a kid, I did not have my own spalnya. Only when I got a teenager, I got. Spalnya. <laughs> okay, spalnya ends with ya. It is a feminine gender. Это спальня. Она красивая. Она зеленая. The color is green. Она зеленая. Дальше. Letter T. T makes the sound Туалет. Туалет. Это туалет. Он белый. Он белый. Он чистый. The whole room, actually. Uh, туалет refers to the whole room, not only to this uh, sitting loo. <laughs> it will have a different word. And we will learn it a little bit later when we'll go in details about each of the rooms. But I can tell you now, it is unitas, unitas, the sitting room. But the whole room is toilet, toilet, ends with t, so it is ends with a consonant. It is a masculine gender. Это туалет. Он белый. It is white, but she is white. Он чистый. It is clean. Дальше. К, к, к. Комната. 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 It means just a room. So any part of the house is a, a room. Комната. Туалет, кухня, зал, спальня. All of them, they are комната. Комната. Where I am, it's also a комната. Дальше. Letter V. 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 Like letter V. V. Ванная. 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 It means a bathtub. Ванная. Комната. Комната is a room. Exactly as, actually logic as in English. So if we say ванная is bath and комната is room. Ванная комната. And I will just make it here. So, the vanna комната could be connected with the toilet. Maybe not. It depends. But it, whether it's connected or not, it's still vanna комната. 
even if you have only uh, a douche, a shower, without a bathtub, still it will be vanna komnata. It's still a bathroom. So now we are going to check different parts of the house. We're going to label them. You can click on start and here we have Kuchnia. Kuchnia. You can listen, you can click on the word, you can listen, you can repeat. So please do it as much as you can. Vanna komnata. Vanna komnata. Zal. Zal. Spalnia. Spalnia. So you see, we have this one, two, three, four dots, and we have to connect these four words uh, into each of the комната, to each of the rooms. So first one is кухня. 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 We кухня. usually cook some stuff there. Mm -hmm. That's one of my favorite rooms because there's always food there. Next one. Ванная комната. Ванная Комната. So it's the longest word and Ванная it goes комната. to a bathroom. Ванная комната. Там ванная. There is a bathtub. Там туалет. There is a toilet. Дальше. Зал. 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 That's a Зал. living room or a sitting room. Mm -hmm. Спальня. And the final one. Спальня. Spalnia. Spalnia. Mm -hmm. It's a bedroom. And if we look at the word spalnia and the first three letters S P A spa. That will refer to actually a sleep. Spat. Spat means to sleep. Ya splu. I'm sleeping. Это spalnia. It's a bedroom. It's a place where we sleep. Uh, спящий, спя, sleeping. So sometimes uh, uh, only the first two letters they are the same, but still it's possible to guess the meaning. Finally, we are getting to our cases. And why did we learn all of these rooms? Because we are going to learn предложный падеж it's prepositional case that uh, answers the question где where so exactly where in the kitchen where in the bedroom where in the living room so we're going to use it so as i told you there are six cases in total in russian language the first one is именительный падеж and short way is ip and uh, Именительный, it goes from the word name, nominative. It's basically just any word that you see in a dictionary, any noun. So cases, um, it's just like the way how the word looks like in different situations. And it's always about the nouns, endings of the nouns. For example, most of the words that we learn today, это кухня, это uh, ванная комната, это зал, это туалет. It is nominative case, and it's exactly the, like the way how you found in the dictionary. So, nominative case answers the question who and what. Это ина. It's nominative case, именительный падеж. Это телефон. Also, nominative case. Это моя мама. This is my mom. Again, nominative case. Именительный падеж. Это вода. Именительный падеж. Это стакан. Именительный падеж. So, all of these just simple phrases. It is someone or it is something. Nominative case. And uh, we have many different others. We're not going to talk about them. Today we're going to talk about the number six. Предложный. Предлог. Предло means a preposition. So it means in the answer there will be some prepositions. 
So, and today we'll look at the first part of it, uh, the question Gdzie, that means where. I'll type it, okay, if I change the language, where. Gdzie, where. Ja igraju v parke. Ja igraju, I'm playing. But where am I playing? Где я играю? Where am I playing? In the park. В парке. So, в will be in. Park. Парке will be our noun in the uh, prepositional case. So, what's the difference between the standard form? Let's say the dictionary form from the imenitelny padesh and uh, predložny padesh. So we had eta park, but here, first of all, we must have the preposition. In the first example, we don't have anything, and also there should be uh, an ending of the word should also change. We had park, no ending. And here we have ending yeah, park yeah. Of course, there are different rules on how to add those uh, endings, and we are going to talk about them. Before that, we need to see the difference between two prepositions, between two predlog. The first one is v, it means in, inside of something, and another one is. Na, na, n a, na. It means on something. So to be able to remember where do we use in, where do we use on, you just need practice. And to be honest, if you will miss, uh, let's say, if you mix them up, it's not a big deal. People will understand you are a foreigner, you, you made a mistake, but who cares because the whole um, story would not really change much unless you're like really searching for something or maybe like you, maybe you're with the police, uh, the police investigation and they will be quite strict. But in that case, you'll have an interpreter, so don't worry. Okay, so... In the prepositional case, despite the gender, all of the nouns, they will get the ending ye, 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 ye. So, for example, stool, a desk or table, in Russian language, they are the same. Na stalia, on the desk or on the table. Kniga, changed into v. Knige, kuchnia, na kuchnie, derevo, na dereve. So, despite any gender, masculine, feminine, neuter, we don't care. The final letter should be ye. That's it. That is like the main rule. But of course, there are some exceptions. And this is when Pau Paua came to alert you that there could be some <laughs> exceptions. Let's uh, look at them. So, exceptions is исключения. If a feminine gender, a word that it belongs to feminine gender, ends with мягкий знак, we will write E at the end. В тетради. Где? So, where are your notes? Or where have you written something? Oh, Tetradi. Tetradi. It's a notebook. Tetradi. But I have some checks. V Tetradi. Next one. If it's a name of a country, uh, strana is a country, and it ends with letter ya. It's still feminine gender because it ends with the ya, ja, but it's name of a country. So, for example, Russia, где в России? 
So instead of ye, again, we write e. And the very same thing goes for the uh, neutral gender. There are some words that end with ye, like upražnenie, an exercise. Like maybe it's an exercise in the book or a physical exercise. It doesn't matter. Upražnenie. So, где в упражнении? So, these are only some exceptions. Basically, if a feminine gender ends with a мягкий знак, or if it's a country that ends with я, and if it's a neutral gender and ending with я. That's it. And again, not all the time. This is uh, maybe only one one word for neutral gender, but it's okay. Don't worry because I have the whole table here. So, in most cases, uh, when someone asks us the question "где," we must use preposition on or in. It's Hugo Boss. Hello, hello. Uh, so it will be in or on. In is v, on is na. And only in three cases the ending will change to e. So you can always look at this uh, little helper. You can click uh, on this expansion blue thingy <laughs> square and you will see the uh, little help and tip. So let's start the exercise. Don't forget to write your name and Hugo Boss. Here is the link to you. Check your Russian. It's a little test slash exercise. You have to choose. Am I mute? No, I'm not. Uh -huh, my mic is working. Okay, let me double check. I don't think that I'm mute. Okay, let me double check. No, no, no. Everything is working. I just checked the Twitch, so it's good. Okay, so you have to... Whoa, I got a wet vest, swimming vest. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, check the... Yeah, just you. <laughs> so let's check the test. Yida na... Kuchnia, kuchnia, kuchnia. Yida is the food. Na is, means on. I mean, in English we say the food is in the kitchen, but in Russian language it's just the uh, one of the differences we use on. The food is on the kitchen. Yida na. So should we choose kuchnia, kuchnia, uh, or kuchni? So if we who were you shushing? <laughs> the husband and the cat. Because he went from the store and he bought like a swimming vest for me because we got a boat. Okay, so kuchnia. Yeda na kuchnia. Is it possible? No, because we know that in Predložny Padesh we can have only ending ye or i. So we have to figure out which one. Kuchnia. Is the infinitive okay? Infinitive is for verbs. It's the nominative case, so it ends with ya, and we even have here example na kuchnie should end with ye. Yeda na kuchni. Food is in the kitchen. Oh, I got so many hair elastics. Rizinki, rizinečki. And do you know why I'm happy? Because my cat loves to steal and destroy all of those. And uh, <laughs> after he chews on them and I can never get any. So now I have a lot. Okay, let's go next one. Ya ubivayu v. I'm killing in. Igra, igre, igri. Again, we look. They could, can't be ending with a. So it should be only ye or e. Igra, it's a feminine gender that ends with a. So it's just like kniga, knige, 
в игре. Я убиваю в игре. I'm killing in a game. Тарам! I actually do kill a lot in a game. Ты в офис, офисе, офисе. Офис ends with the consonant, male gender. We have to add the e. Ты в офисе. Ты в офисе. Дальше. Ручка на. A pen is on. Ручка на. Тетрадь ends with мягкий знак. It's a feminine gender, but it ends with мягкий знак. So it's an exception. We should use ending E. Ручка на тетради. Next one. Где телефон? Where is the telephone? Where is the cell phone? Он, because it's he, в сумка, сумки, сумки. Сумка, a bag, a purse, ends with a, so it is a feminine gender, not an exception, so it should be е. Он в сумке. Дальше. Где полотенце? Полотенце means a towel. Где полотенце? Оно в ванной. Комната, комнате, комнате. Комната ends with a. It's a feminine gender. Is it an exception? No. So it should be yet yeah, the end. Оно в ванной комнате. So try to finish this uh, little queasy test by yourself and uh, see how well uh, do you understand the <laughs> prepositional case. To be honest, it's not much of a kind of a learning or repetition. I don't know. It's not more like understanding. It's more like a little bit like a puzzle. You have some clues and you just have to figure out by yourself. If you will figure out by yourself, with the help of a teacher a little bit, you will perfect that uh, case. На урок, уроки, уроки. Урок means a lesson. Урок ends with a consonant. We don't have exceptions for the consonants. Show the ending should be е. На уроке. On the lesson. Actually, in English, probably it will be said like during the lesson, but in Russian, a little bit easier. На уроке. Где девочка? Where is a girl? Она в школа. Школе. Школе. Школа. School. Ends with a. Feminine gender. Do you have it in the exception? Мягкий знак for the country? No. So, we have to use е. Она в школе. Я люблю жить в Грузии, Грузии, Грузии. So, Georgia, that is the country. In Russian, it's called Грузия. Грузия ends with я. It's a name of a country and it ends with я, so it is an exception. So we have to use letter E, ending E. Я люблю жить в Грузии. So answer C. Я люблю жить в Грузии. And here is Russia, here is Abkhazia, and somewhere here is my hometown. <laughs> okay, let's go. В means in университет, университете, университете. Университет, university, university. So ends with t. It's a consonant. So it is a masculine gender. 
We don't have any exceptions for masculine gender. So, в университете. Yeah, at the end. At the university. Телевизор в зал, зале, зале. The television is in the living room. Зал ends with L. It's a consonant. So male gender. We don't have any exceptions for male gender. So ending should be yet. Телевизор в зале. В зале. Мальчик в парк. Парки, парки. Парк. Ends with K. K is a consonant. So it's a masculine gender. It's non exception. So yeah. Мальчик в парке. Я играю на компьютер. Компьютере. Компьютере. Компьютер ends with a R. R is a consonant. So we have to add ending yeah because it's not an exception в компьютере фотография в телефон телефоне телефоне a photograph is in телефон n n is a consonant so it's a masculine gender в телефоне книга в Рюкзак, рюкзаке, рюкзаки. Рюкзак. К is a consonant, masculine gender. So, в рюкзаке. Книга в рюкзаке. Кот на дерево, дереве, дереве. Дерево is a tree. It ends with O. It is a neutral gender. And for the neutral gender, we have one exception, the word упражнение. And it's not the same. We even have the example дерево на дереве. So, should be yeah, на дереве. Кот на дереве. Я на работа, работе, работе. Работа is job or work. I'm at work at the moment. Я на mm -hmm. работа ends with a feminine gender, not any of the exceptions. So ending is yeah. Я на работе. Я на работе. Streaming is my job, so I am at work now. Я на работе. Книга на стол. Stall is a desk or a table. Ends with L. L is a consonant. It's none of the exceptions. So ending yeah. Книга на столе. Книга на столе. Я в Латвии. 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 Где ты? Я в... Latvia is the name of a country and it ends with ya and we have here and it's an exception so the ending should be e ya v latvi ya v latvi next one lampa v a lamp is in spalnya bedroom spalnya it's a noun it ends with ya, so it's a feminine gender, and we look cool. Here we have Russia, Russia also ends with ya, but the exception uh, is only about the countries. A bedroom is not a country, so no special rule, it should end with ya. Lampa в спальне. A lamp is in the bedroom. Big dear, where are you? В дом, доме, доме. Дом ends with M. M is a consonant, means дом is a masculine gender. So it means there are no exception. 
We have to use the ending ге. Ты где? В доме. В доме. And the final one. Где папа? Where is the father? Where is daddy? Он в туалет. He is in a toilet. Туалет ends with т. Т is a consonant. So it means the word туалет is masculine gender. And it means no exceptions. We should use the ending year. Где папа? Он в туалете. And da 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 da. We have finished. So congratulations. Da 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 da. So now we're going to practice a little bit more. This is the final exercise for today for today's lesson. We will need to соедини фразы. Means connect the phrases. And again, it will be about предложный падеж, prepositional case. So we have the beginnings of the sentences and the continuation of the sentences or the end of the phrases. So first we have еда. Еда. Еда means food. Еда в рюкзаке. Can we say like this? Food is in a backpack. It is possible, but maybe there are some better places. Еда. Еда – это комната. Makes no sense. Food is a room. No. Еда. Еда в спальне. If it's my house, it is possible. <laughs> it's actually, I always have еда в спальне. But uh, maybe there is a better place for it. Еда. Еда в ванной комнате. Еда in the bathroom. Maybe. Еда. Еда на кухне. This makes more sense. Because that's uh, the place where we cook food and where we store it. So probably yes. Еда. Еда в зале. Uh, food in the sitting room or living room. Possible. Еда. Еда он на кухне. Kind of, but еда is feminine gender, so it should be она на кухне. So еда. far, еда на кухне may, makes more sense. Okay, let's try next one. Тетрадь и ручка. Тетрадь и ручка. A notebook and a pen. Тетрадь и ручка в рюкзаке. So far, it makes much sense. I don't think I want to move it around, so we'll see. Next one. Что это? Что это? Это комната. Makes sense because in the question we have uh, это, in the answer we have это. Uh, let's say, can I put here? Что это? Он на кухне. Он means he, but это it. So they don't match. And the rest of the phrases I can't use because they are... Just continuation of the sentences. They are not the answers to the question. So it will be что это? Это комната. Кровать. Кровать в спальне. A bed is in the bedroom. Makes a lot of sense, to be honest. Let's keep it. Телевизор. Телевизор. TV. Телевизор. Телевизор в ванной комнате. A TV in the bathroom. I don't think so. Телевизор. Телевизор в зале. TV in the living room. Makes sense. Телевизор. Телевизор он на кухне. Grammatically, it's kind of an okay sentence. Television. He is in the kitchen. It kind of makes sense. But... Hey, Darby. To be honest, it will be better to Телевизор. keep it with the living room. So let's go with the next one. Туалет. 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 Туалет в ванной комнате. What the hell is that? That is Russian language. The end of Russian lesson that you almost missed. Туалет в ванной комнате. A toilet in the bathroom. Makes sense? Туалет. Туалет он на кухне. Toilet. He is in the kitchen. 
makes no sense in practical way of living, non in grammatical. Туалет. And the final. Где пирог? Где пирог? Where is the pie? Or a pie? Где пирог? Он на кухне. It is in the kitchen. Пирог ends with г, so the word пирог is a consonant, uh, sorry, it's a, a masculine gender, so he is masculine gender, they match. So, submit the answers. Do, 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 do. All correct. So, if you want, you can uh, start again, you can check the leaderboard, so far it's only me, but... Who knows uh, how many people would be later soon. So for today, we have finished with our prepositional case of the Russian language. And uh, you can, your homework is, to practice all of these exercises that we've done together by yourself and try to finish them without re-watching my video first. And if you completely cannot do it, you can watch and do it again together with me and for today the russian lesson is over and see you again next tuesday on twitch kick d live and trovo hey darby no today we will play but you know first of all i have a lesson and i need to uh, I always upload these lessons later t on YouTube. That's why I had to make like the ending <laughs> to the lesson. But now I'm going to have a two minutes break. I'm going to grab the food and we're going to eat together, watch some stuff together and play League of Legends. And I'm going to show what I got today as a gift. So I need just a two minute break and uh, I will be back.